We are at level three now. Basically what these do is help us charge our lithiums correctly. So it's drawing down the alternator now. It's time to take her out, so let's take her out. Welcome to Sailing Lady Africa. I'm Ricky and this is my wife Simone. After two years of hard work on our boat, she's finally ready to take us from South Africa across the Atlantic to the Bahamas. Be sure to join in our adventures by subscribing down below. It's been a seriously beautiful day today. We are at level three now. Um, so we were at level four before, now we're at level three. A lot of the shops have opened, hardware stores have opened. So we were able to buy a lot of the things that we needed to finish some boat projects. So that means work's gonna carry on. Ricky has a few other projects on other people's boats to earn a little bit of extra cash for our sailing kitty. So he's gonna be busy with that. And I'm gonna have to be very creative with how I make videos. So that's gonna be fun. And um, yeah, oh, and then food stores have been open for takeaways. So we had some Nando's. If you guys don't know what Nando's is, it is Fame Grilled Chicken. It's amazing, it's our favorite. So we had some Nando's last night and we were able to buy some cold beverages. So we've had our taste of beer again, which is nice and wine and all that stuff. So yeah, so let's get back to work. So we're at that time when our buck boosts arrived in the mail and we are going to install them. So we're excited because on a trip up from PE to Cape Town, we didn't have these things installed so it was a little stressful. But now we got them so we're gonna install them. If you would like to know exactly what this is, there's a link in the description below and gives you all the product details if you're interested in getting it for your own boat. So we got our two, we got two of these. These are 50 amp buck boosts and they're from Victron. And basically what these do is help us charge our lithiums correctly with the right voltages and the right amperages. And why this is important, so most lithiums are pretty robust things, but one thing they don't like is voltage spikes. You give them one solid voltage spike and you can pretty much kiss your battery system away. And what will happen is actually the circuit boards and the BMS will, will blow as opposed to the the cells itself but if that goes then you've got no control over the cells so what this does for us is it takes the power from our alternator it rectifies it for the voltage that we program it to we'll also show you how we hook it up with the software program it put them in and then pretty much every time we charge the engine it will give a delay that we will set onto it so on mine i want about two to three minute delay and what that's going to do is allow it to charge the the engine battery first so it will focus on charging that first it also allow the temperature of the engine to come up a little bit and then before these kick on these are 50 amps so i'm thinking of probably running them at about 40 amps and the reason for that is our alternators are 70 amp alternators by that means they're only running at just above 50 percent which is fantastic because then the alternator will last forever we'll reduce the amount of belt wear and we really don't use our engines that much for charging and we've proven it on the way down from pe to cape town we never well we did start the engines but those engines weren't connected here's the cables that come from the engines uh, so there's nothing on there they weren't even connected on the batteries we just had the cables run we had to leave that's what it all looks like that so they weren't connected and with the solar we we ran the two fridges we ran the autopilot um, we were a little bit more sparing on power but we have enough solar so these are pretty much our backup safety but also very good systems for charging lithiums and we don't need to like there's there's other charging systems to charge lithium batteries but then you need to modify your alternators put uh, remove the regulator put a field wire into it and all of that kind of stuff um, so if you want a basic system off the shelf this is the way to go um, they don't come in the sense of like a what would you call it DIY kind of kit 
these guys kind of expect that you know what you're doing for the safety of the product and the safety of yourself. But I'll show you guys quickly what it looks like. Um, it's got you important. Make sure that you download the latest software pretty much before plugging in. Um, comes with your Victron manual, which explains some of the th things about it. Um, cables and a unit. It's it's pretty bare bones, but like I said, it's built for, for guys that know what they're doing and how to install. But I feel at the same time, I've never done this myself, but from quickly just getting some information on the net, it seems pretty easy to do. And uh, we're gonna do ours and we'll go through it with you guys. So first things first is I need to get this all vacuumed out. I cut, drilled that hole and sort out this mess of cables. Um, it was like this because we needed to leave and I don't have too much time to sort out and eaten up the cables. So I'm gonna get to do that now when we install the two buck boosts. So the kind of plan that I have is one buck boost this side for the starboard side engine and one buck boost here for the port side engine. And then going into the two buzz bars at the bottom. I wish I'd gotten a bigger buzz bar for this side. Um, these are these are 100 and I think 180 amp rated buzz bars, but I would have preferred a long one, same as I got for the negative one there. But let's get this vacuumed up and then we can start. So step one was shutting down all the power. Everything's off, the batteries are off, the chargers are off, the inverters off. Pretty much dead boat. I want to move the buzz bars and I want to get sort out all these cables. I don't want the cables looking like this, so I want to neaten everything up and I want to put one buck boost here, one buck boost there, and then leave spaces for the fuses because I only have two fuses and I need fuses on the supply and on the outlet. Looking up these lugs so that we can go to the engine with them and they supply the buck boost. While Ricky is busy, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell to alert you every time we upload a new episode. As well as give us a big thumbs up, it's a free way you can support our channel. So what you doing? So, two buck boosts installed and I believe that we are the first people to show this on YouTube of running a double buck boost system from two separate engines on a cat. I don't think there's anyone. I don't even think people install these. There's maybe one person that I've seen installing Victron buck boosts. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was like so a with this system you don't change your alternator nothing and, um, and it protects our alternator because we limit how much current we we're gonna put out of it so first test but i first want to link up and make sure that i can monitor the parameters on my laptop too you're gonna do the parameters and then start the engines parameters are already done i just want to monitor it on my laptop while we're running the engine too i don't know what's going on it's showing green and green and green and green 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 So five minutes, I've set a five minute delay that allows the engine to warm up um, and allows it to also charge the start battery bank a bit, get that voltage nice and up. There's everything stabilizing now. Boom. So let's, now we just gotta wait. 34, 32 seconds to go and then it's gonna kick in. And we are up what the engine is gonna do when it kicks in. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> okay, 16, 15 seconds. It's at idle. 
That, I'm very comfortable with that. That's nice and safe. But what's that if it's going? Uh, 40 amps. Oh no, it is right. Sorry, it's 35 amps. It's giving us at the moment already. Yeah. Uh, 20, 28 amps. 28 amps is what we're putting in. It hasn't been running for long, but I can hold it with my hand. Crank, crank up the RPM a little bit. So the one back boost is working, and now we're going to test the other one. So we've got 14.8 volts coming in. We want to charge the lithiums between 14.1 and 14.4. That's our limiting parameters. And uh, so we've got the delay still going, and you're going to hear the engine going down in a couple of seconds, nine seconds to go which is the start delay which means it gives the time, engine time to warm up and uh, charge the internal battery. Here it goes. There we go. So it's drawing down the alternator now and it's giving us output current 40 amps and 40 amps over here. So we confirm we're charging at 40 amps output voltage 13.8 because we only had with 78 percent so it will bring the voltage down and as the battery starts filling up we'll come to our 14.2 where we want to be um at bulk a lot of juice so it's fine now so step one of checking this one is fine but we still got to check what happens when they're both running that's pretty warm so we're running both engines now to make sure that everything is okay and that there aren't any problems and then we're going to keep them running and charge up our batteries a bit just to double check that it is charging our batteries and there's no problems. Our buck boots have been installed, another item of the to-do list. As you can see, here's one of the hatches we replaced and it's nice and clean and clear and you can see through it. And here's one that we didn't. How badly it's crazed up, you can't see anything through that. And we hopefully gonna use this kit and we're gonna get it done. So the kit that we're gonna use is one of these. And you might wonder what is it? It's actually a headlight restoration solutions. It's from 3M. Um, comes in a neat little kit like this. I have used one of these before. I used it to do uh, headlights on a car and it worked amazing. So you see there's an example before and after and the thing with car headlights is it's acrylic and that's acrylic so should give us the same results. So we're gonna start off by cleaning this this hatch lid and then we'll tape it up and we'll show you the steps. So first step clean it. The microfiber cloth get it nice and clean once everything is dry and clean, you want to start with the tape provided and put two layers everywhere. And I'm going to tape up the aluminium to make sure that you don't get the anodizing from the hatch cover off. With everything set up, I'm actually just using a battery drill, but you can use a normal drill. Uh, just if you've got a speed setting, don't set it to the maximum RPM. On the sponge pad, I've put the 500 grit uh, sanding disc and with a light pressure, we're going to start sanding this and try and get a lot, do a first cut pretty much is what you're doing. We only decided to do the one half first so that we could see the difference the polishing and cutting would make, hence why there's tape in the middle. And now we're on to the 800 grit sandpaper and now we're going to hit that with the 800 and by the way if you guys enjoy this video subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you'd like to support this video and what we do check the link down in the description below we started seeing a bit of difference but nothing drastic yet the next step is the 3000 unitized pad and we've got to keep this puppy got to keep this sucker wet. You have your spray thing, spray the lens. Oh, 
I think I can already start seeing better through it. So the last step is putting the pad and putting your rubbing compound. Rubbing that in a little bit, not too much, and you want to make sure that you never run the pad dry. Let's go. Unfortunately, our hat was a goner. The crazing was just way too deep and way too old for this technique to work. But for minor scratches and surface scratches, it would definitely work. So we made the decision to replace it, as it was an eyesore for Ricky. So we had Vitas at the moment, and as much as I love this place, I hate it at the same time. Every time we come here, they offer us good deals and stuff, and we end up spending money. It is stuff that we need. We've got extra spares for the engine, so filters and all of that stuff. Um, since our engines are under warranty, we have to use their stuff for the first three years. And um, so we got that, and uh, we got a new hatch, which I'm so stoked about because our hatch is toast up top. It leaks a little bit, and it's completely crazed over. And, um, and we need to put in a uh, a number two tank so there's a holding tank with the fittings for it so that we can be compliant for the US waters so I'm stoked about that that's gonna be awesome so we've had this hatch on for a while and um, it does leak the one handle is broken um, the seals a little old and really really hard and um, she's just not the glass is completely crazed over so I could take the glass out I could replace the seal and the handle but by the time I'm done that I'm probably at the price of what we got a new Vitas hatch for and um, if you chat to Vitas they give you a good price and we got it locally so we're gonna put in a new Vitas hatch and I'm pretty stoked because I want I've wanted to replace this hatch actually because of its looks but now it's just because it leaks every time it rains yeah. we're having leaks we're going water going down the headliner and we don't want that well it so, leaks because the handles are all stuck because the handles are damaged and it's super difficult to find these handles like the guys will try and sell you another one and and it's expensive you're like halfway there just once you've done it. the handles in the acrylic you more than you like 80 percent there and then you need to do the seal which they can't find so you're going to put a generic seal and i think it's just time to take out so let's take out I had beautiful tape on, so it's a fairly easy off. Very nice. I can't see in at all. Can't you? No. I can see you. How does it look? Oh, that's nice. Oh, damn, that's nice. <laughs> if you would like to join our Lady Africa family and support our channel, you can do so by clicking on any of the links in the description below.